Kevin Martin here, your UT admissions guy. In this workshop, I've recreated and reproduced, with permission, a real UT Austin student application, and I want to walk you through what an admissions reviewer might be thinking as they're reading and trying to assess which admission score to assign this applicant. We'll look at the essays and the resume and discuss the results at the end. I hope you enjoy this video. Hello and welcome to my application review workshop where I have, with permission, recreated and reproduced a real UT Austin student's application, sharing with you their biographical information, their resume, and their essays, and I will walk you through what an admissions reviewer might be thinking as they're reading and trying to determine which score to give this student on the personal achievement index scale uh, 1 to 6. And so first we see that this is an out-of-state student that's attending a large suburban public high school, um, coming from a well-off uh, college or graduate level educated family. They do speak their mother tongue, Gujarati, so that's pretty cool. They're applying first choice major, major to computer science, which as you probably know is one of UT Austin's most selective uh, major at the university. It's also especially hard to get into for out-of-state students um, because there's many, because it's one of the most popular and uh, highly sought after majors. There's also a lot of uh, out-of-state students who are applying for a limited number of spaces. So that's something to keep in mind as we review this applicant. So let's take a look at their academic information. So they've scored extremely well on the SAT of 1520 with a perfect 800 on the math. Um, they're ranking roughly in the top uh, 10 to 11 percent of their class for a strong academic index score of a 3.64. This academic index score accounts for half of the UT admissions criteria, and the review score on the application, like with the resume and essays, account for the other half. They also have a lot of STEM courses with AP Calculus BC, an independent studies course, and then actually a couple of uh, humanities classes as well. So they've got a well-rounded um, and rigorous senior education. Okay. So let's take a look at their resume. So occasionally students will inc include coursework or academics at the top, and usually this isn't something that reviewers are going to note, but we see here that they've uh, attended the Johns Hopkins Center for Talented Youth and taken a wide variety of different STEM and computer science and computer programming related classes, in addition to a number of independent and open course study. So if you're an applicant who's done a number of uh, summer classes or open courseware or independent studies, you can certainly include that, and I encourage you to do so on your application because it's something your reviewer is going to note because it demonstrates you have a level of curiosity that you're willing to go beyond and above your school's curriculum um, and seek out, you know, especially more varied or niche topics that might not even be available at a traditional high school setting. So I imagine the student's going to tell us a little bit more about that later on. So here they have a resume section titled STEM Experiences. So they founded and are the president of their school's launch club, which is a kind of an entrepreneurship meetup. That they've recruited 50 members is also pretty impressive. Um, they've competed on the robotics team and also a cybersecurity uh, competition team, which is pretty cool. They've got some women in STEM activities um, in addition to a um, tutor for their honors chemistry class, which is also pretty cool. They've also competed in a few first LEGO League competitions, um, serving as a mentor. Um, and they also received a, a fairly prestigious recognition to be the North Carolina STEM High School Student of the Year. And so that's certainly is something that, that draws my attention as a reviewer. It's obviously more than just National Honor Society or some local or city level accomplishment. And so that's something that sticks out. And they also have the portfolio of skills uh, we would expect to see from a student who has such extensive computer science and STEM experiences. So let's check out their SAA Tell Us Your Story. And so we begin with the discussion of being a an Indian South Asian student in a presumably um, predominantly white classroom setting. And so we have kind of a, a typical scenario that, I, that I've had many sh students share with me that I've read in, in some essays about, um, you know, students in one culture that are less knowledgeable or even ignorant about what happens in other countries and that's um, certainly uh, no exception in this student's experience and um, they have quite a different story because they were born in California but had spent um, some of their early years in India 
Um, and before moving back to North Carolina towards middle school um, due to a father's promotion. So that's three different moves before the age of 14 or 15. And so um, that demonstrates some level or suggests some level of, of adversity with all the different transitions that's going on, puts their accomplishments for their resume in an even brighter light because to sort of plug back into the American school setting and uh, immediately, you know, take to it well, um, it's, uh, you know, an interesting context that puts the, the, their varied accomplishments and commitments into a slightly different context. And they also talk about staying um, connected to their roots by practicing Indian classical dance for a number of years. And, um, you know, it's talking about some of those cross-cultural differences between the United States as a society, but also just the, the differences between Indian and American schools, which also provides a little bit more nuance and context um, anytime a student can supply some of these rich details to illustrate for the reviewer um, is certainly an effective way. It also establishes the setting and context um, to sort of put the reviewer in the shoes of the applicant. Let's see. So then they discuss a summer where they visited um, Mumbai with their older sister, and they note that it's not their first time to go back after having moved to the United States, but it is remarkable that they were unaccompanied by their parents, um, especially um, you know, as young adults, so that's certainly impressive. And then they share some nice anecdotes here about connecting with their culture, um, particularly they're, you know, helping to build the relationship with their grandparents who don't speak English as well. At any point in this module, if you want to pause this video to read a little bit more closely, I recommend you doing so because there's many students that have uh, grown up in one culture and moved to another or they themselves are mixed race or multicultural or perhaps even mixed religion. And this is, I think, essay is a really solid example of um, you know, connecting with roots and talking about some of the complexities and nuance and multidimensional aspects of having a, a mixed childhood or, a, you know, experiences growing up in different communities. Um, they close on a nice anecdote here about uh, learning more about their grandfather's fight during the Indians' War of Independence against the United Kingdom. And then here at the very end, they wrap up what they had discussed in the very beginning with the introduction, where one of their American classmates asks, like, if there's Wi-Fi in India, and then they revisit that question here at the end. And um, yeah, so a really nice consolidation and um, ties up a lot of any uh, ties up any loose ends that might have been on the reviewer's mind. And so there's a clear progression of ideas here and um, a very thoughtful essay overall that sets up the short answers as well. So let's visit the major short answer. So we start from an early age. Um, where it sounds like she was getting some influence at home to start studying some books and even in first grade, asking her dad to teach her algebra, which seems fairly advanced, and then became a, a grandmaster in abacus, <laughs> which is a pretty interesting thing. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone who's doing that, but it's pretty impressive that she can add and multiply five-digit numbers in their head. Um, so we're getting a portrait here of, you know, not something specific to the resume, but more about their background or knowledge that may not have been obvious in other parts of the application. So this is a good example of getting off the resume a little bit and sharing some of those um, deeper background characteristics and interests. Um, they also pivot to a direct discussion of their interest in applied mathematics and computer science, speaking more generally, and then they get a little bit more specific um, with some of their own interests and I'm talking about some of the student organizations that they want to apply to at UT Austin, including women in computer science. So what's interesting is this applicant applied for um, the Turing Scholars program as well. So we'll visit the Turing essay a little bit later. Um, the logic being that the major short answer where it asks you to talk about why you want to study computer science is very similar to the Turing prompt to, to, that prompts you to ask about or talk, discuss specific STEM experiences that you have. So we'll see that a little bit later. And with the SAA already establishing the context that she had grown up in India, it's no surprise here uh, when she starts with, before I moved to North Carolina, I attended the international school in Bangalore. And so that's one way that an SAA can establish the context for, so that way she doesn't have to go and say again, like, oh, so I was living in India and spent, you know, all of these sentences supplying a context that the reviewer is already familiar with. So whenever you're doing your application, you should assume that the reviewer is going to remember what they've just read two or three minutes ago. But the order of operations here is they speak about kind of a, a general interest and in how they had some experiences teaching underprivileged children. Um, they pivot to a second activity, that first bullet point on the STEM experiences by find, founding their club's launch X um, entrepreneurship student organization. They also talk about some of their commitments as a, a female leader in computer science. And so they're touching on 
three or four different things here, including a, um, a, a quick blurb about the award that they had won for being the, uh, you know, one of the competitions that they had competed in. And so this is an example of a leadership short answer that's touching on a variety of different things rather than committing to just one activity or experience. I think this diversity short answer is pretty cool because she starts off with, although I love STEM, and that's obvious from the STEM resume, um, particularly from the major and leadership short answers, but they also talk about a variety of other interests they have, including Bollywood dance, um, taking photography, uh, entering a playwright competition, talking about some of the books and podcasts they enjoy listening to. Um, they even speak about taking some classes online where they lived in India in elementary school and even you know touching on some of the self-studying that they had done beyond computer science and um, so this is a great way to talk about diversity because diversity means, of course, more than just, you know, your skin color or the background that you come from or uh, your gender, um, but it can also mean your interests and hobbies. And so this is a perfect example of an essay that, particularly if you're a STEM student who's very worried about being seen as kind of too concentrated in STEM, the diversity short answer can bring to attention some of these things that may not be obvious in the resume. Like no, almost none of this was mentioned in the resume. And so this is a great way to complement the rest of their portfolio. And so recall with that major short answer, we're on touring now, but on the major short answer, they didn't speak too specifically about a lot of the STEM robotics experiences that they had. And um, so that's what they've done in Turing, talking about the Center for Talented Youth, all the different courses they've taken, um, opening up with their introduction in robotics or first exposure to it, speaking more about some of the other accomplishments and accolades that they've received, um, which corresponds with it on, on the resume, seeming that it's a pretty significant accomplishment. They also speak about an AP chemistry course where they talk about computational um, chemistry, which I think is pretty cool. And I believe the student even submitted a portion of that research paper for some of their other applications that allow them to um, share some independent study that they have that they have done. Um, so this is really checking a lot of the different boxes in terms of um, you know answering the prompt about all their different STEM experiences. Uh, in hindsight, given what we know about the student's outcome, I think if I knew if we knew then what we knew now, I probably would have recommended to move some of this information into the major short answer um, because rereading it now, I see that there are some gaps with the major and because the regular admissions reviewers don't see the Turing essays, but the Turing committee sees all of the regular admissions essays. And so it might have been nice to include one or two of these paragraphs to really hit home and demonstrate their fit for their first choice major. Um, I think, in hindsight, that might have um, held them back a little bit in the admissions process, and that's uh, obviously on me, and that's my responsibility to look at the division of labor. Um, so that's something I'll keep in mind. It's just tough with Turing because the essay prompts are so similar. It can be pretty challenging to figure out where you should distribute which parts of your arguments. Um, but nevertheless, they obviously demonstrate a very deep commitment and interest to computer science and STEM. Um, they've taken a lot of extensive coursework, independent studies, um, even non-STEM interest, with, which I think is really cool. So they've got one, you know, two or three very deep commitments, plus having a wide variety of different interests, um, most notably in their diversity short answer, and also a, a handful of state and national level accomplishments. They stand out as well. I think it's fairly obvious that this is a five. Um, I don't think any reviewer would see it as anything less than that. I mean, maybe if you got a very grumpy person, uh, they might give it a four. I think it's also plausible that this person or applicant could have received a six. I think their likely score is probably a 5.5, might have been a five, it's hard to say. Um, they were it, they were denied to UT Computer Science and Turing, um, so it's possible they could have received a lower score than we realized, especially for the reason I mentioned about the um, distributing the information differently and in content between the major and the Turing short answer. Um, but it also just goes to show just how extremely competitive UT Computer Science is, even for out-of-state, um, you know, even outstanding out-of-state applicants. Um, but they were admitted and uh, did enroll at uh, Illinois Champaign-Urbana's Computer Science Program, which admits like, I think like less than 15% of their applicants. I think this past year it was like 10 or 12%. And so arguably even more competitive than UT Austin. And they were also deciding between like UNC Chapel Hill and a few different author, authors and offers. And so they ended up doing really well in the admissions process. It was just a little unfortunate that it didn't work out for UT Austin. Um, but I have no doubt they'll be a wonderful addition to um, Illinois' computer science program um, and their campus.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find more helpful information at techsadmissions.com slash blog. And in the information section of this video, I provide links to a free online email consultation if you're interested in potentially working together, and links to my book, Your Ticket to the 40 Acres, and my premium course, Getting Into Texas Universities. Thanks, and I hope to see you again soon.